Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover the quick start section of the Langchain documentation. We're going to cover the setup, installation, building with Langchain, and we're going to build our very own uh, large language model chain. Um, in fact, what we're doing is we're creating our own ChatGPT as developers. We're going to create this uh, same function right here where we can ask our large language model a question and we can produce an answer through the Langchain uh, modules and classes. Towards the end of this tutorial, we're going to create this simple um, app together, right? This is actually our very own ChatGPT. Our ChatGPT is going to be uh, uh, going to have a front end interface so other people can use it. We will have a title and we will, we will have an input field just like we have here. And people can use our, our app with a large language model to ask a question and get an answer from our app, right? This is only the basics um, for this session, but click on the notification, join the Charming Data community for exercises and solutions because I'm going to continue working on more and more complex apps and large language models as we go through the Langchain documentation together. All right. So to get started, I highly recommend you go to the GitHub link under the video and click on the LLM uh, slash chain um, hyphen chain dot pi file. You can either download the file or copy everything and put it inside your VS Code, your Jupyter or your PyCharm uh, because this is uh, where the code that we're going to work on together. All right. So now that you have everything, open the LLM chain.py file. And this is what we have, right? The first thing we're going to do is we are going to go over the setup. This is the setup in the documentation in Langchain. Um, there's Jupyter instructions. We are going to use PyCharm and we're going to use uh, pip, right? So to install uh, Langchain, first, you need to either have your virtual environment. I created my own virtual environment here and be logged into it. Let's go back to the terminal. Here you can see that I'm inside my virtual environment. Or you don't have to. You can just install all the libraries globally in your computer. It doesn't really matter. Um, and now we have to install our libraries. So we're going to do pip install Langchain like this. I already installed it um, to save us some time. pip install Langchain open AI and then pip install python.env that's going to allow us to keep our API's key uh, secret and, and hidden, right? So I install all the libraries. Now I'm going to in import these libraries into my, uh, my app, my file. And these uh, two lines of code, line six and seven, is what allows us to find the path of where my, my um, API key sits and then load the API key into my script. All right, so then I don't have to do this. Open uh, API key, I think it's called equals well underscore underscore equals. I want to have to put my put my key here visible to everybody. If I ever deploy this app, this will automatically pull the key from the .env file using these uh, two lines right here. All right, so now we need an OpenAI key, right? You cannot do anything without the OpenAI model without an, an OpenAI API key. So to get your key, go to this link under the video. You will see uh, sign up. I'm already logged in, but you will click the green button. You will sign up and you will go to the key section, API key right here. And here's where you can create your own key. If you already have uh, um, uh, an account on OpenAI, uh, but it's an older account, I would open a new one with a new email address because this will give you another three months of free API key, right? This is a new account that I just opened. All right, so we'll go to the API key. We'll create a new secret key, mm, test five or whatever, create secret key. And then you want to copy this and you want to put this inside the .env file. Just create a new file called .env, open API key like this, and we'll just put it in here, our, our, our new API key. So now that we have our new API key already loaded inside our script, now we can start working. So let's go back to the documentation and we'll see 
We're going to skip this section of Langsmiths because this is for more and more complex uh, large language models. We don't need that for now. We're just going to install our first library, which we already did. Remember, we did that uh, with pip install. And then we're going to um, incorporate our first uh, model and invoke it. We're going to call it, right? So we're going to look for an answer to our question. And this is how you do it. We're going to call the chat uh, OpenAI model module. And inside, we're going to declare this model. GPT 3.5 Turbo, this is the one we're going to use. In fact, you don't have to declare it. You can erase it because um, it comes by default, I think. But to make it clear, this is what we're going to use. We just did this. And if you go to this link here under the video as well, you see that in the free tier, you have these different models. 3.5 3.5 Turbo is for text completion, uh, text embedding to, uh, to convert natural language text into um, vector numerical values, whisper is audio to text, uh, uh, and then Dale E uh, 2 and 3 is for creating images. We're just going to do text completion today. So we're going to use this. This tells us it's three requests per minute, so we cannot use this more than three times per minute, and um, requests per day, and then tokens per, per minute. But this is, this is high. Don't worry about it. So this is our model. Now that we have it, our large language model, now we can invoke it, we can call it, we can activate it. And this is going to be our question, right? So let's go in here, let's do Python lmchain.py. It's going to run this code, include the API key, and it's going to spit out an answer. So let's look at the answer that, we, that it's going to spit out. Usually it takes about five seconds. And while it's doing this, it's actually using my API key. So if we go here, under the usage, you'll see that it'll probably take a few more uh, tokens. Use it. I used 11,000. It's probably going to use another uh, 5,000 tokens or whatever, 3,000 tokens, right? And it's slowly going to diminish the free account that I have or uh, values. And here's the answer. This is a question. Can you tell me about AI? And the answer is artificial intelligence plays a significant role in various aspects of the world today. So it talks about automation, it talks about finance, it talks about education, a very, very um, thorough and detailed answer. All right, let's hashtag this out, line 12 to, th uh, to 13 and 14, and let's hashtag this back in from 19 all the way to, to 30, like this, because now we're going to add prompts. This is the second section right here. You go to the Langchain documentation, we see that we're adding a chat prompt template and we're creating our first chain, all right? So let's see what we're doing here. Here, we're in, uh, 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 importing these necessary libraries so we can create these two things, the prompts and the output parser. Let's start with the prompt. Prompt is, is a common method in, uh, in the AI world where we kind of prompt our, our, our model, we prepare it, we customize it, we, we give it a personality sometimes. In this case, it's the same as doing this. In ChatGPT, if you ever use ChatGPT, we'll copy this, we'll go to ChatGPT and we'll say, I'm going to ask you questions and any questions I ask you, always answer the AI questions with skepticism. So we're kind of like preparing the model to give us answers that, that, have skepti that are um, skeptic, right? Uh, sometimes you'll see prompts that say, you're an expert uh, uh, PhD uh, researcher in X or Y field, right? We're kind of preparing the, the, the system to answer in a specific way. Uh, and then we have our user input. This is the question that we're going to allow the user to ask, which in this case will be ourselves as well. So we have our prompt, we have our model, just like we had from above, and then we have our string output parser. It stringifies the answer. It just makes the answer. You see how it says here, content equals. It's going to remove the content, and it's just going to provide, the, provide us the string. Now the most important part. We put everything together into a chain. We tie everything together into a chain on line 28. So we do the prompt first. The prompt is going to be this section right here. The prompt is going to feed into the large language model. It's going to give it the prompt. It's going to give it the question. The large language model is going to uh, complete the text. It's going to predict an answer. And that answer is going to send through the output parser to stringify it. So it's going to come out as a string. 
So this is how we do it. Chain, invoke, and the input is going to be, we're going to replace this input right here. We're going to replace it with this um, key value, with this question right here. So let's see what happens. Python now is going to run this um, section right here. And it should give us the same answer, but with a little bit more skepticism, right? Because we that's how we prompted our, our model. And here we see this section right here. It says, it is important to approach AI roles in the world with skepticism. As with technology, there are potential risk and ethical concerns. We didn't have that in the first answer. So you see how we prompted the model to answer in a certain way and provides us a point of view that it might not have provided, provided us otherwise. Great. So now we learned all about this first initial part of the documentation, setup, building, and creating our first uh, chain. In the next video, we're going to do retrieval chain. But I do want to give you a kind of a bonus thing. Right now, what we did is we created our own ChatGPT, but as developers, nobody can use what we created. This is only on our own computer. What I'm going to do now is we're going to bring Dash into play so we can give a front-end interface to our model. So we can have other users, people around the world, use our model um, that we created. So we'll hashtag this out from line 19 to 30. And from line 35 all the way to 71, we're going to bring that back in. And we're going to run the, the, the file again. Let's open it right here. OK, now you see we have our title. And then we have an input field, right? Just like in ChatGPT. There's, I mean, ChatGPT has a lot more in the interface, but it has an input field. You can ask ChatGPT a question, and you'll get an answer. Exactly like our app that we just built, you can ask it a question, and you can get an answer. We're going to ask it the same uh, question like we did above. Can you tell me about the role? And. Let's see if we prompted it here. Yes, here we also, in our Dash app, we also prompted it to answer with skepticism. So we should see an answer in a couple of seconds with some skepticism. You see? Developing technology limitations and so on and so on and so on. So this is so cool because this is now an app that I can share with others around the world so they can use my app and uh, together with a large language models that's incorporated inside the app. So how do we do that? We do that by... Uh, using Dash. So we're importing Dash library. And by the way, I'm also going to give you exercises at um, the very end. Right here, you'll see different exercises um, and some solutions to them. So stay, stay, stay to the end, and we'll talk about the exercise a little bit to help you practice what I'm teaching you right now on your own. All right, so line 35. We incorporate Dash. Remember this from line 39 all the way to line 46? This is exactly what we had above. We already learned this. The three components, parser, language models, and prompt, and we tie them into one chain, just like we had above here on line 22 to 27, uh, 28. I'm going to instantiate Dash, and now we're going to create our app. This is the layout. This is exactly what we want our app to look like. So we have our, our, our HTML div. This is the, the title of our app. As you can see here, my LLM app, all about AI. And then we have our input field, just going to be a text. And it's going to be, it's going to have no value at the beginning. It's going to be empty at the beginning. But we're going to uh, prompt, uh, ask the user to ask a question. And this is going to be the new value. And this empty div right here is where we're going to um, display our result. So now we go back to the callback. I have a video on the callback if you want to learn all about it up here. But to explain this briefly, we're taking the value of this input field. So this is the input field. We're taking the value, which is the question, right? And uh, representing it here. This is the uh, argument, uh, the function argument. This is our value of the input field, the user request. And we're going to feed it as an input inside the chain. Remember, as we did here, the user had an input up here, right here. We um, ask the question instead of the input. So we're doing exactly the same right here. This is a user request. So if I ask this question, let's take an example. This question right here, if I ask it, it's actually going to, and hit enter, it's actually going to, this is going to be the question right here, right? 
well, as a string. This will be the question. Now this will be the question. And now it's going to invoke an answer. And it's going to return the answer to the children property of this div, to the output. So this is the output right here. Here is where it's going to return the answer. AI is uh, dangerous because blah, 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 blah. So all the answer will be right here because remember we stringified it. We stringified it. So now we can see the answer as the children of the div, which is why we see it right here. And that's it. This is how you use a simple uh, app uh, with Langchain uh, using Dash. Um, I do want to show you some, some exercises uh, so you can get to practice this on, on your own. Uh, I have all the exercises for you on GitHub and the solutions and the exercises on the Charming Data community. Come join. It's completely open right now. Uh, I have exercises and solutions. You can click on them. Well, I'm not going to click on the solution, um, but you can see the exercises here. Practice it and then try the solution on your own and then feel free to ask any questions. Uh, if you get stuck, I'll try and help you. So the first exercise, I'm not going to go into detail because I want you to read this on your own and understand uh, what we're doing. But the first uh, exercise is going to be around uh, tokens. Uh, tokens is what allows us allows the um, uh, ChatGPT to understand or measure usage of the API key. Um, you want to limit the usage of token in many cases because you are on a free account and the free account has uh, a maximum of um, five dollars and I don't know uh, one million tokens or something so just be careful with how many tokens you're using and this exercise is going to ask you to update the max token limit and you can do that by clicking on this link right here on top uh, which will lead you to the chat open AI parameters look for the token parameters and try to limit the number of tokens that your API is going to output your model is going to output Exercise number two um, is talking about the temperature. Also, you're going to look into the temperature uh, parameter of the chat open AI right here. And you're going to set the temperature between zero and, and two. Zero is very conservative. Two is very creative and unruly. So try, try to set different temperatures to see the difference in the, in the answers. Last but not least, this is the most challenging exercise, but the most interesting one as well. Uh, we're going to create, uh, build on top of the app that we created. Remember this one right here. We're going to build on top of the app, and we're going to allow the user to control the temperature. In exercise number two, we control the temperature as developers. But in this case, we're going to allow the user to decide what temperature they want for their app. So I built most of it. All you have to do is fill in the blanks here, and here, and here, and you should be able to find the answer. If not, again, the answer is in the Charming Data community uh, where I teach all about data visualization and AI um, and AI integrations. Uh, so join me. Uh, we have a lot of community members that are helping each other out and working on projects together on a monthly basis uh, to improve the world and, and to improve our knowledge and our skills in the Python and AI world. So um, I hope to see you there. Uh, and that's it. If you enjoyed, click the thumbs up, join the community, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you uh, in a couple of days or on the platform. Have a good one. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out.